Hello, my dear friends. Hope you're doing well. In this episode, we're going to be talking about high ticket and some of the myths, some of the misnomers, some of the misconceptions. And I want to address these for you because I think it's really, really important to understand really where high ticket could or should or even can fit in your business and whether or not a high ticket offer is actually what you ought to be uh, deploying as a strategy. Because every strategy comes with its own set of issues, its own set of consequences, both first order consequences and second order consequences. It comes with its own problems. Nothing is perfect. Okay, That's the most important thing I want you to take away from this is that while everyone tries to sell you high ticket, it's not perfect. It's helpful and it can help you in certain ways, but to be frank, for some people, it's actually not the right thing for their business. Uh, And you may even be in a business right now where you are operating a high ticket and you may be having problems in your business that you think are caused by something else, but it actually happens to be the fact that you have incorrectly chosen to deploy high ticket into your business. Okay, so uh, let's run through this list and then we'll talk a little bit about Um, why I recommend high ticket and who I recommend it to and specifically why it's recommended because it's not a blanket recommendation for everybody. Okay, so number one is the big myth that I see is that you have to have high ticket and the reality is that you don't have to have it and you can still be wildly successful. We have many clients who do upwards of twenty to thirty thousand dollars per month in after ad spend profit so after the ads come out, they have twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month in uh, profit. Now they of course have, you know, support people that have to run these uh, low ticket, small offer, you know, fifty dollar, hundred dollar, five hundred dollar course businesses. Um, and so there are some expenses associated with that twenty to thirty thousand dollars. But that's it. They they are more than happy with that business model. You can't look at Udemy and tell me that the only way that Udemy makes money is with high ticket because it doesn't, right? It doesn't have any high ticket. In fact, how Udemy makes most of its money is by offering sales to even down, so mark down their already low prices on all of their courses. You look at something like uh, Masterclass. Now, Masterclass is unique because it, it received funding in order to get itself to a profitable business. But again, it's only a very small annual, I think it's an annual, something around like $100 a year, you get access to all of their courses, all of their classes. A very good friend of mine has a client who simply runs a $47, uh, like it's a $47 front end offer and it goes to a monthly membership and that's their entire business. Okay, so you don't need a high ticket offer to be successful. That is full stop, period, the truth. However, what you do need high ticket for is if you are the kind of person who wants to deliver more than what a standard course can deliver. So here's the truth about courses. Most people don't even finish the course, much less, uh, you know, even fewer people get any success from the course. That's the reality of the course business, which means if you are an entrepreneur who is concerned or cares about the people who buy from you, high ticket is really the one of the few tools that can deliver the kind of results that so many people put on as their uh, what, what you would call star students. So I'll give you an example. A lot of people who run funnels of various kinds are telling you about, so for example, some of their best clients, some of their best students, some of their best buyers, Uh, nine times out of 10, those people are not coming from just the course. Okay, so they may have purchased a course by that person, but then they would have upgraded into some other thing, got additional help, got additional resources, um, had more ability to get the thing done. And and that is nine times out of 10, many of the testimonials that are shared there, of course, are exceptions. Nothing in the world of marketing is as black and white as people want you to believe it is in order for them to, to, to sell stuff to you and for you to be able to buy things from them. But generally speaking, the types of businesses, so if you're in the help business, the ability to charge higher prices directly reflects the amount of resources, time, and energy you can devote to that buyer. Okay, so this is a simple issue of uh, almost mechanics. You could say this is more about mechanics than anything else. And I'll give you an example. If you pay me $47, if you pay me $100, if you pay me $500, I cannot give you very much in exchange for that. I can give you lessons. I could give you hours and hours of lessons. I could give you hours and hours of worksheets, but you have to get out of the mindset that hours and hours of worksheets and hours and hours of video is actually helpful. Everybody knows that course completion rates are very low and that success rates in courses are very low 
as well. So if you give me $50, if you give me $500, the best I can do is to give you a course, to give you some templates, to give you a tool, a software, something like that, which has very serious limitations in its ability as an asset to help you. It's just the, the nature of the constraint, okay? Now, you may say, well, why, you know, I, we work with a lot of people. The name of our company is Peaceful Profits. That tends to attract um, a lot of people who genuinely care. They're seeking peace. They're seeking, like, stability and all that kind of stuff. They want to bring help to other people. So we always have the person who says, well, but I want to give as much as I can give to people for as inexpensive as possible. And I would say I totally agree with you. But what you need to do is be realistic. And here's how realistic you need to be. Think about how much it costs to pay your mortgage or to pay your rent. Now divide that number by 50, right? If you're selling a $50 course. This is just your mortgage. This is just your rent. It's not the taxes you have to pay as a self-employed person. It's not the health insurance if you live in the United States that you have to pay. Not the expenses of the business. Not if you have kids. Not the food. Not, just to pay your mortgage. Think about how many human beings have to give you $50 in order for you to be able to pay that mortgage. Now tell me with a straight face that in any sustainable way for you as the provider of whatever it is you're doing for them, you're going to be able to give them a significant amount of attention. I've been doing this long enough to know that you can't tell me that and expect me to believe it. Right? Like, I know, I've seen, I've been through it myself, this thing that we do as people who care about others and want them to succeed and want them to grow, we uh, say, well... The best thing for them is for me to charge very, very little and then for me to give of my time and, and all that kind of stuff, right? How many times have you ever created an offer and then it, the offer itself burned you out because you weren't getting paid enough? Well, it really goes back to this very simple idea, which is what do they tell you when you get on a plane and you're traveling with a small child? You put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you help the child. Pricing at a high ticket level, creating an offer that you can charge $3,000, $5,000, $10,000, $45,000 for is not about gouging people for money. It is about creating an environment that you can sustainably deliver higher value outcomes for the buyers who buy from you. The other day I saw somebody um, praising themselves clearly somebody who's only been on the scene for about two or three years doesn't quite understand this yet, praising themselves for having a low ticket offer that dumps into a membership and, and saying that they're changing the world. Well, my experience has been most people who buy uh, courses, most people who buy memberships don't get nearly the same outcomes as those who are in environments which have been properly designed, which are also more expensive. You yourself can admit that there is a difference between listening to this podcast and if you and I were to sit down for a day, just one day, and plot out your entire business together. Back and forth conversations and et cetera, and et cetera, and et cetera, okay? So you don't, look, the myth is that you have to have a high ticket offer to be successful. That's not true. Don't just slap a high ticket offer into your business because it seems like the right thing to do. What a high ticket offer does is allows you the ability and the capacity to sustainably deliver above market outcomes. Or you could say, I guess, more accurately, above market average outcomes. In other words, I have high ticket offers in my business so that I can outcompete my competitors because my competitors are selling courses only and inexpensive courses. They're doing the $10 a month membership, which is fine and they're going to be successful. But when those people who have bought the membership and bought the courses and bought the stuff are kind of tired of buying courses... When they're tired of not another membership that just tells me stuff but doesn't actually help me get it done. When those people are done with that, they're going to seek out the next level of help in their business. And that's why when I am doing my competitive research, when I'm looking at what's going on in the market, I'm looking to fill the holes of fulfillment. I'll give you an example. One of our high ticket offers is actually a done for you offer, which in this space to say the word done for you is like a bad word. It has to be only group coaching. It has to be only hands off. But what does that mean? How many people are buying group coaching? They're not satisfied because they have to do it themselves anyways. They're literally paying to do it themselves and they just want somebody to do it for them. Well, we fill that spot out, but it's not cheap. 
okay? It's, it's very expensive for our done for you. It's high ticket. Now, why is it so expensive? Well, it's expensive because it's valuable because nobody else is doing it. What's more valuable than somebody just doing it for you and you being done with it? But also it's expensive so that it can be good because good is not inexpensive for me either as the provider. To have a good copywriter on the team, to have a good funnel designer on the team, to have a good operations director and a good and et cetera, et cetera. So this is just a different way to think about high ticket. And by the way, just in case you think I'm, I'm anti-coaching, we have coaching programs as well. And they're expensive coaching programs. Uh, I'm just saying, as you think about your business, asking yourself if you're getting into high ticket just because somebody told you to get into high ticket, or you're getting into high ticket because you think, what I really want to do is be the provider in the market that can deliver better outcomes than everybody else. Because I can promise you, if you do that, you'll stay in business forever. I've been doing this for 14 years. It's not an accident that it's been 14 years. You don't do 14 years in this business just making little courses, okay? You have to actually, if you want loyalty, if you want people who will you know, buy from you for years and years and decades and decades, you have to actually get them a result. Um, and, and I think, in my opinion, my experience, high ticket is the best way, not because of, haha, we're gonna get their money, but because high ticket provides the vehicle by which you can deliver bigger, better results. For example, our group coaching program is expensive, but it's expensive because it's not really group coaching. You actually get one-on-one coaching with our group coaching, plus group, plus a Q&A every single day from experts, plus, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that is, uh, that's myth number one, that you have to have a high ticket offer. You actually don't. You can be quite successful doing all sorts of different things. The number one thing to take away from uh, really anything I ever tell you is that you're a business owner. You don't have to do anything except maybe pay your taxes. <laughs> I mean, pretty much anything you do in your business is entirely up to you, which is why understanding why these recommendations are made is imperative for you to then be able to decide whether or not deploying them in your business is right for you. Okay, here's the next myth, that high ticket buyers are always better than low ticket buyers. I've seen that many, many times. Uh, there's even a meme that goes around and says, Something like somebody paid me five hundred dollars and all they're doing is complaining, and I send them a, you know, and then I have another client who pays me five grand. I send them a check and they say thank you very much. You know, I'll, I'll talk to you next week. I can tell you nine times out of ten, high ticket buyers are way better than, uh, say, somebody who, um, you know, you you set out and undercharge, and you know they're constantly trying to lowball you, and you're you know in this kind of back and forth situation where you're making deals and, and, you know, they're walking over you and you have scope creep and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So nine times out of 10 high ticket buyers with a direct outcome created offer, they, they tend to be better. But again, it's not because it's high ticket. It's because the nature of the offer, it's because pricing is a way to filter out people's competency, right? So if you can afford $10,000 for a program of some kind or for a done for you offer, and you're able to pay that up front, it means that you have $10,000. $10,000 doesn't just fall from the sky. You probably have done what is required to get yourself to a point where you have $10,000, which means you're very likely disciplined and you understand business and et cetera, et cetera. So the pricing itself does offer a filter, but really it's the fact that there are clear boundaries built into what people charge high ticket for. But also (laughs) to assume that high ticket filters out everybody would be to misunderstand human behavior. So I've been doing this for 14 years. Uh, the number of people who hate me is long and distinguished, and the people who love me is long and distinguished. That's just the nature of being in the help business. When you are, are, are going out into the world and you are trying to help people, there are groups of people in general. There are the one, there's the one type who are, will be grateful for whatever they get from you, and then there's the other type who will never be satisfied no matter what you do. I can tell you some of my worst human interactions I have ever had in the 14 years of being self-employed have come from people who are on both sides of the spectrum. They've paid me $5 or they've paid me $50,000. Human beings will be human beings. There's always a human element. There will always be jealousy, um, uh, myopic uh, 
assumptions. So thinking that you aren't good and making all sorts of, uh, you know, assuming everybody's out to get them. Everybody comes to the table with their own emotional baggage. Everybody has external issues, which happen on, you know, I mean, I've had clients who, uh, you know, in the middle of a project, they get a divorce and somehow it's our fault. So I've had, a, not, not that they blame us for the divorce, but they take it out on us. Let me put it that way. I've had clients who are in the middle of a divorce and they lean in harder to our support. And we become lifelong friends and it's beautiful. I mean, that's just human nature. So don't get into high ticket because you think you're going to escape working with human beings. That's another pitch that I think people make, which isn't true. Now, I need to qualify this, though, because it is true that you will have better outcomes in high ticket. Because again, what I said earlier, that because you can charge more, you can do more. When you have better outcomes for the buyers, so when people get more help, when they get more attention when they get more tools and resources, when they get more time, then yes, the natural byproduct of that is a consistently more satisfied group of customers. Where again, you compare that to a course, people buy the course, they have the best intentions, they pull out their credit card, they sit down to buy, and what happens? Well, the life gets in the way, they don't do it, and most people won't take the responsibility for themselves, they blame it on the course creator, and blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's important to distinguish what we mean when we say that high ticket buyers are higher quality. They're still human beings. It's just that you're serving them better. And so as a result, when there are better promises, when there's better boundaries, when there's better resources available to deliver results for these individuals, they tend to behave better. Because that's just the, I mean, whether you're charging nothing or 10,000, if, if, they're, if they're receiving these things, they will tend to behave better. And then another thing about high ticket offers, I know in my business, and I would actually recommend this for most people in my business, by the time you get to our high ticket offers, you've gone through multiple steps of filtering. So we are not a company that runs a VSL out into the interwebs runs you through a VSL, gets you on a phone call, and closes you even though you were a stranger to us two or three weeks ago. Now, we aren't that way because we found that the whole idea that high ticket is generates better customers, um, we found that that definitely is not true if we're running a VSL. That, in fact, we like selling our high ticket to people who have already bought at least one thing, oftentimes two or three things from us, before we even let them know that there is something for sale. Now, again, that's our strategy not because it's the best strategy, it's not the most profitable strategy, but it is the best strategy for us in what our desires are for our company. It is the most profitable company for us. You know what's really, really expensive? Lawyers. When you have a bunch of high ticket buyers and they are demanding refunds, which I've seen this in other people's companies more than once to know that this is a real thing, and you have to start calling in lawyers to prevent refunds because there's going to be a whole a run on refunds because you didn't deliver, and da -da, that's expensive. <laughs> and so that's why we don't do things like the VSL model. That's why we have filtering set up. It's why you don't talk to salespeople in my company. You talk to advisors. It's why we don't really push hard on selling because if you don't want, to, if you don't want our help, we're not going to force you into it. That's our approach. Again, the whole point of this theme of this podcast is you're a business owner, you do whatever you want. Could we push for an extra 20% in sales? Could we raise revenues of the company an extra 20%? Sure. Do we need to? For what? We have ample cash reserves. We have ample recurring. We have, you know, it's like we were set um, and the drama just isn't worth the, 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 the cash that it could represent. So that is our approach. It may not be your approach, but that's how we're doing it now. Okay, so myth number one, you have to do high ticket. Myth number two, high ticket buyers are always better. Myth number three, that high ticket must be sold over the phone. So this is something that I think has been, um, uh, well, I'll put it this way. It took me a while to believe this. So I thought if you're going to ask somebody for $10,000, $25,000, $40,000, you have to get on the phone. It turns out that the internet marketing industry has really put a sour taste in people's mouths when it comes to phone selling. In other words, people are more and more, as time goes on, uh, becoming a, a, a quite averse to being sold on the phone because of high pressure tactics and et cetera, et cetera. And so what ends up happening is that you have people who would love to buy from you, but they're not going to walk into a phone sale because they know the tricks, right? As the market becomes more jaded, they're exposed to more offers and et cetera. So uh, one of the things that we found is that you can sell quite a bit um, 
our record, I'll tell you our record, is uh, we sold two, I think it's like two hundred and five or two hundred and ten thousand dollars So that's a collected revenue, um, not profit, but revenue collected, $205,000, uh, simply using email conversations. We used a very simple, uh, so similar to Dean Jackson's nine-word email process with a few modifications. Um, a team members handled the sale. I was not involved at all. And they simply, you send out an email. This is the offer. People reply to the offer. You have conversations. You close. Now, in that in that regard, the price point of the offer was only $5,000. However, we have sold $30,000 done for you over email, no phone calls, um, I don't know, 30 or 40 times in the past two years or so, which is about as long as we've been doing um, chat conversations. And of course, if you have things that are less expensive, you already know this exists. In your own support inbox, you very likely have sold $500 courses uh, very easily. Um, and, and so really it comes down to an understanding that while high ticket might be scary for you to sell, it's not nearly as scary for people to buy if they understand why it's expensive. So it goes back to the design of the offer. Are you charging $10,000 for a $500 video course and a Q&A once a week? If you are, then yeah, why would you, like, I don't get it, what's the $10,000 value, right? That is a poorly designed high ticket offer. That's a high ticket offer only just to gorge your audience, right? If, however, you've created a high ticket offer, which has a lot of value built into it, you've thought it through, and not this like made up value, like my videos are so good, they're worth 10,000. No, no, outcome derived value, which is to say that you have put in the work to establish an offer that actually has an incredibly high likelihood of the outcome being true or the outcome coming to pass or somebody achieving the outcome because of the tools that you have added or the access that you've added or the people that you've added or the exposure that you've had or whatever it is that you've done that you've added, done for you, done with you, whatever it is, that it's clear to someone how easy it will be for them to achieve the outcome. That's when you don't need to get on phones and use all sorts of silly tactics that really kind of don't work as much anymore because people are getting more and more jaded. It's really starting to come down more than it ever has been. This is not a new thing. It's always been about the offer. But I think more now than ever, uh, it really comes down to what exactly are you offering? Not what is your product. What, is your, what are you offering? What is the promise? What is the outcome? How easy will that outcome be for me to achieve? What am I going to get to help me to achieve that outcome? Do you understand me enough to know that, what, when I, um, that this is the outcome that I need, but also do you understand me enough to know that uh, or, or to have addressed what my unique problems are in achieving that outcome and have you addressed those problems and come up with solutions to help me? So that's another thing to consider. Okay, next myth is that high ticket equals obscene prices. So I think sometimes, I remember, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, somebody popped into the support uh, inbox and said, I really want to do high ticket, but I don't think I have anything to sell for $50,000. Look, that's definitely high ticket. And congratulations to you if that's really where you're you know, trying to add to your business and all that kind of stuff. I think a real good starting price point for most people is somewhere between 25 and 5 for their very first go, for a beta version, for iteration one, to figure out the messaging, to figure out the delivery, to figure, to figure, to figure, all that kind of stuff. Because look, here's the reality. If you don't believe it's worth that money, it's going to be so hard to sell. Well, you can do all sorts of mindset jumps and tricks and hype yourself up, but at the end of the day, it's easier for you when you can just look somebody dead in the eye and say, yeah, it's $10,000. And, and, and be so convinced in your own belief system that what you have created is truly worth $10,000 or $5,000 or $2,500 or whatever it is that you are figuring as a price. So it doesn't need to be hundreds of thousands of dollars. There's, a, there's an offer circling around how to make a $100,000 offer. I think that's fantastic. I can tell you the quick way to do that is you create an offer that is worth $100,000 over 12 months or over two years or over. So a lot of these sort of like, I closed $100,000. No, they might have closed it technically contractually, but they only collected, say, the first month of 5000 It's going to be 5000 over two years. So yeah, technically, I guess it's 100000 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You got to be careful with a lot of claims out there. But the point is that you don't have to start high ticket, quote unquote high ticket, at obscene prices. Remember, what is the goal of high ticket? The goal of high ticket is to deliver bigger, better results for the people who buy from you. So pricing can change. Just this year, we've increased prices on our stuff simply because of supply and demand, but also because we have improved the offer. So when it started, it's not the offer that it is now. 
So this idea that your, your high ticket offer has to be perfect the second it goes out is, is an unnecessary hurdle for getting started along the process of creating something helpful. And so if charging 3000 for it helps you get it out there so that you can learn about your customers and clients, so that you can improve on it, so that you can deliver results, so you can see what it's actually going to take, if that helps you to get it out there, I would recommend that before trying to figure out what's the perfect way to say it so I can charge 12 grand and just getting so nitpicky and procrastinating and hurdle putting in your own way uh, just because you feel like you have to hit a specific number. Okay? You can always raise prices later. But it's significantly easier to raise prices on a good offer, on an offer that's getting results on an offer that's actually helping people. That is way easier to do. Um, and so step one is less about setting price and more about setting intention and goals and what is this offer going to be and who's it going to help and how's it going to help them. All right, next, uh, and this will be, I say the, oh, well, actually one thing about obscene prices. I don't know you, but if I will bet all of the pennies in my pocket that you're undercharging for whatever it is you're already doing. That has been, in my experience, clients the past, however long I've been doing this, um, I mean, just now specifically, I'm thinking of a client conversation I had just this week. It's, it's the most common conversation I have, which is people undercharging for what they're doing. So for you, you may already have in your business the beginnings of a high ticket offer. It just needs a little bit of refinement. Um, and again, you go back to the very beginning of this where we talked about that the reason it's expensive is so that it can help people more. Um, and, I, you know, I would say most of the clients I work with are undercharging in what they have in their head of what they could do for clients and what they believe a client is willing to pay for. It's this simple. Okay, I'll, let me, uh, well, let's jump to the next thing to illustrate this. So the next myth is that high ticket equals more, meaning if you have a five-hour course that you sell for $100 and you want to sell something for $10,000, then instead of a five-hour course, it needs to be a 90-hour course. Instead of giving them one helpful thing or one helpful outcome, we're going to give them 90 helpful outcomes. And that's simply not true. And in fact, the opposite is true. Let me give you an example. When you buy our done for you services, your requirement to get the outcome is almost nothing. It's give us the money, Talk for a little bit if you got to make a course or two to fit into the acquisition funnel or if we're writing a book for you, um, you know, be interviewed a couple of times. And then at the end, you're going to get this and 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 this. So in other words, in our done for you offers, which are our highest ticket offers, the input from the buyer is the lowest. Now compare that to our, I think what's $50 now, I actually don't even remember what the price is, for our weekend workshop program. The $50 weekend workshop program requires you, the buyer, to do it all. To watch the videos, to fill out the worksheets, to come up with the plan, to launch it to your list, to da 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 So what does it mean? It actually means that the higher up you go in price, the less people want to do. I'll give you another example. I can teach you how to make $100,000 per month. But what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to come to Portland, where my offices are, you're going to have to work for free for me, 50, 60 hours a week, for the next two and a half years. At the end of the two and a half years, you'll have everything you need to know how to make $100,000 a month. That's offer A. Offer B, or you can pay me 25 grand, and in a weekend, I'll give you everything you need to do to accomplish the exact same thing. Less is more. It's certainly more attractive, right? And when you are thinking about your high ticket offer, it's not about you cutting corners. It's about thinking about the consumer, the customer. What are the fewest things I can ask from the customer to achieve what they're trying to achieve? If you could deliver the same result in a 20 minute presentation with some worksheets and a half day consulting, where, they, where you sit down and you help them deliver and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you could charge significantly more for that than a course that might be 10 hours long. Again, it's because of the 
increased likelihood of the outcome. And if there's anything that, and I know you know this, you probably know it about yourself, you know it about other people, you know it about, if you have workers, you know it about the people. The less someone has to do, the more likely they are to get it done. And so this myth that high ticket, I, I can't do a high ticket because I've already like, you know, put everything I have into this course or I don't feel like I can talk for 20 hours or I don't feel good. That, that's not good. I'm glad. <laughs> that's not what a high ticket is for. Um, a high ticket is for a higher likelihood of the outcome being achieved. And that's very, very important. Okay, so we've talked now for almost 40 minutes. I told my team the other day I was going to try to do a 10-minute podcast episode. They all laughed. Um, <laughs> one of the things that we can, uh, one of the things we're going to do now is wrap this up and give you some recommendations. So I personally do recommend that if you help people, that you put together a high-ticket offer. Now here's why, and here's what we didn't talk about with the myths. With a high-ticket offer, you not only introduce the ability to deliver more, you also introduce uh, higher margins per transaction. What the heck does that mean? It means that, well, it means a couple of things. One, it means that you can be really bad at marketing your business and your business will be fine. There is a huge difference between trying to make the bill at the end of the month $47 at a time versus making the bill at the end of the month $10,000 at a time, $25,000 at a time, $2,500 at a time. There is a huge difference in your mental well-being and stress and in what kind of marketing campaign. Look, if you need to make the bill at the end of the month $47 at a time and that's the only thing you have in your business, get ready to hustle. Get ready to hustle like you have never hustled before. Get ready to experience the what we call the outer edges of your audience. So for example, some audiences saturate very quickly for, uh, let's say, um, helping coaches and consultants, right? There's not very many coaches and consultants in the world. Even fewer of them will buy stuff. And so if you've saturated that world with $47 offers and you don't have anything else for them to buy, you don't have a high ticket, et cetera, et cetera, not only is your marketing going to have to be stronger because you need to get those last few percentage of the limited market to buy your $47, but now you're going to have to deal with scaling issues because if you got to pay your bills at $47 at a time, it means you got to sell a lot of those things. So when you have higher margins per transaction, you not only have this thing where you're set up so that you know, you are, are giving yourself the space and the time and the et cetera to be able to add resources and blah, 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 so that you, everything that we've already talked about, okay? That's not only true, but the higher margin per transaction also means, and this is a beautiful thing, fewer interactions to hit any goal. Fewer interactions to hit any goal. So we um, teach acquisition funnels, right? Acquisition funnels have been around since the 1800s. I, it makes me laugh every time I see some internet marketer who just popped up a year ago thinking that they invented them. But in, acquisition funnels are this simple. Sell something inexpensively, impress the customer, sell them something else. That's what an acquisition funnel is. So it's, 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 it's a process for growing a business. Many, many people have used it. We didn't invent it. We just got really, really good at it over the past couple of years. And that's all we've been doing for cl clients recently. Okay, so... We use acquisition funnels. We use $47 offers and $5 offers, but those are not how we pay our bills. Those are how we bring people into our world. How we pay our bills is with our high ticket offerings. And here's what's beautiful about that. I need many fewer customers and clients than most people who have the same revenue numbers in their business. Now, what does that mean? Every human being represents some form of chaos. And, and when I say chaos, I don't mean it in the sort of laissez-faire way that people use it. I mean, every human being is a set of variables, of random outcomes of, you know, one day they can be upset, one day they're happy. Are they actually doing the program? Like, there's a whole host of things that happen when you bring people into your business. So our acquisition funnels don't actually have to be cranked to the tilt, which is what a lot of people have to do with their acquisition funnels. They have to pour the gas on. They have to absolutely crank it because if they crank it as hard as they possibly can, and that's the only way they keep their business on and et cetera, all the stuff that we've been talking about, we don't have to do that. We can keep our acquisition spend relatively low. We can get benefits from not having to pay um, scaling penalties when it comes to ads. We have very few support issues because we're able to support the volume. And then on the backside, we just don't have to sell that many. One, because our ad costs are covered. So our, co our, our average earnings per high ticket sale, meaning that we get to keep and collect. Another way to put it is our cost per sale is zero. So our margins are even higher. So we are able to bring on fewer. I can't tell you 
that's for me that has been um you know look I love people I love my clients I love my customers but I do have limits into how much chaos I'm willing to tolerate now I know some of you are going to say well it's just because your offer isn't you know done correctly well in I have $10,000 offers that I'm not even involved with at all I have $45,000 offers that I don't even know who is buying I don't know what's going on the team takes care of it so I'm not even talking about like delivering on those high ticket offers. I'm talking about what those people do inside the business. Are they detracting from my team? Are they causing problems? Are they et cetera, et cetera? And we just have fewer instances of those because we need fewer people to, um, to run our business. So again, for us, that is a very positive uh, thing uh, to, that has been a side effect of, of this process. Um, but also, the, the fewer interactions isn't just about delivery. Fewer interactions also means that when we set sales goals, um, we, we don't stress, right? Now, it doesn't mean we aren't pushing, but I've been a part of sales teams where they would post the number that, we, that needed to be hit in 30 days, and the whole team is sitting there looking at that and just being like, how are we going to do that? For us to hit our goals, and our goals are quite high, um, I think sometimes we, uh, we are underestimated in the amount of revenue that we do. And honestly, that's fine with me. I don't think we, everybody needs to know how much we're doing. Um, but uh, with our particular goals, we have uh, the opportunity to not be forced to get ourselves into bad situations with who we're closing, what their deals are, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which means we have a very high um, employee retention rate and vendor retention rate. It's a very fast pace, but... Uh, you know, I think at least a, a, a decent place to work because we were a little bit more picky and selective in who we work with and et cetera and et cetera. Which again, if you're in internet marketing, you think the only thing that matters in business is marketing and sales, but there's a whole very expensive reality of operations and team and the cost if you have a high turnover and what does it cost to retrain and da da da. So we save a ton of money in our company by making an awesome company to work for. And the awesome company to work for is a company that doesn't have to deal with a lot of these uh, major issues that come from, um, you know, having to hit or having to, having to take on questionable clients or having to take on questionable coaching offers and, and all that kind of stuff. So, okay. And then the last thing um, is I high. So these are things that, by the way, I don't even know if I mentioned, if you need higher margins or you want higher margins so you can have fewer interactions to get to your goal, then I recommend high ticket. And of course, the last thing is I recommend high ticket to anyone who thinks they might be undercharging because you probably are. And you might have gotten a lot of advice where the advice was, well, just raise your prices. Well, I mean, that works to a certain degree, but if you don't change your offer, it's difficult to raise your prices, especially if you have a commodity as a service. So if you are another health coach, if you are another copywriter, if you are another fill in the blank and you are offering generic 12 week weight loss or I will write your copy or I will design your, if that is your current status, you do have market driven limits before you need to radically look at what it is you're offering. So you can hit the ceiling when it comes to general copywriting, or I write sales letters, or I write emails, or I help you lose weight in 12 weeks, or I will help you get more sales and leads with Facebook. There's, there are real limits. And so I recommend that you go down the path of high ticket in how we have described it here, uh, if that is where you're at, because it is the next step in your business. Okay, so the next step in your business is to take what you're offering to create a high value offer, and then to set up the systems to sell that offer. And if you'd like help with anything that we've talked about today, simply go to peacefulprofits.com forward slash call. We have all sorts of offers, as I mentioned. And uh, you can also hit reply to whatever email brought you here. Or if you saw us on the Facebooks or something like that, you can always send us a message. Again, we have a lot of different ways to help, but helping people to restructure their offers to create, you know, I wish... We had spent some time thinking of a different word than high ticket. But the fact of the matter is when we say high ticket, people generally know what they're talking about. It allows us to start a conversation. But refiguring your offers, rethinking about what it is you can sell to people, how you can help them in bigger, better ways, is a fundamental thing that we enjoy doing for clients because of what it unlocks. Because of what it unlocks, which is everything that we've talked about. 
All that said, of course, you don't have to do any of this. This is a model that has worked for us. It has worked very, very well. I think it will only work better into the future. Um, that said, I think the future of high ticket is really going to be less about how you're selling it and what you are selling. And uh, doing the work of creating good offers is what will help you to uh, be successful in that area. So again, you can go to peacefulprofits.com forward slash call, or you can hit reply to any of the emails that you ever get from us. And we have teams standing by ready to have advisory conversations to see if you uh, to see if you actually do need a high ticket offer, um, and then also to see uh, what ways we can help you to accomplish that, to, to create an offer that you'd be happy to uh, sell to others and help them get better results. So that's it, my dear friends. Hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next episode.